Welcome, welcome everyone back to the day in the life of a miner. Largely requested from my last video, we are going to go over my mole meta build and what I have on my mole and how I mine, what it's for, its purposes, and then we're going to get after it and show you guys it in action. So let's take a look. So, vehicle loadout manager. I do have two moles. One I bought in game and one is a loner for the Arasta, but anyway, don't read too far into that. So systems on the cooler side is size three. We have a chill max grade A. Of course, it's the industrial grade A component. It wears a bit slower and lasts longer than some of the other components. Our plant is the military version of the grade A because it takes a bit better of a beating. So that's for my power plant. The XL1 is a size two quantum drive. And of course it is the best one for size two, but it's also the best one in the game. A lot of people don't know that. This is the fastest quantum drive in the game because it reaches tier two speed it outpaces everything else and then for show generators is of course the fr76 which is the grade a size 2 military version and they're great shields they take a beating and it's just awesome to have on your ship paints uh, a lot of people ask me about it so this is the aphorite paint right it's the purple paint it's it kind of looks black but the black is for the carbon edition and if you can see that please let me know i'd love to buy it but I know it's not on the market as I'm making this video. And then Dolovine is the, you know, AKA white skin, but it's Dolovine. Vehicle weapons come stocks, doesn't really matter. Utility, here is the bread and butter of what you guys are after. So I'll tell you, there's two things going on with the back lasers and the front lasers. So to give you an orientation of the ship, right? So if we flip this around, right, like this. Okay, so this is your laser one. This is your turret slot one. This is your turret slot two, and this is your turret slot three. Okay, so with that in mind, the Helix two is the pilot laser, right? The turret slot one. There are two Riker C3s, okay? Riker C3s, this says 125%. Don't get too wrapped up in that. Subtracting 100 from it, that is the actual buff that it's giving to you. So it is a plus 25% increase to laser power, and all you're giving up is minus 1% optimal charge window size. So negligible decrease in your charge window size, for a huge increase in laser power. I mean, just alone on a Helix, that goes from 4,000 and something to 5,000 laser power, just like that. Um, I run a second one, so 50%, so we're up to 6,000 power. And then the Stampede is actually an active mod, which means it has limited number of uses. It has six uses, each one lasts 30 seconds. It gives you minus 10 instability, which is good. You want lower instability, means less spikes, less bigger spikes, minus 10% shatter damage. So if you do overcharge it and it blows up, it damages you a little bit less and a 35% increase to laser power. So we're talking a pretty decent push of laser power here. And all you give up is extraction laser power, which in the current build, it really doesn't matter. You extract slower, which I don't know anyone making a build to extract faster and it only lasts 30 seconds. So who cares? But this setup passively, right? If you're using the stampede mod, will break up to 30 to 35 K rocks, which is pretty sizable. Um, when I'm out in my mole, I only care about large rocks, so I like to break them first with the helix. Um, a second note for the helix is the surge, right, is another active mod. It gives you, where is that? Surge is 150% laser power, so plus 50%, but unlike the stampede, you can only use one stampede at a time that's active. I can put three surges on here and use them all simultaneously, which means I can push literally 150 percent more power because i have three of them so that's 10,000 laser power and you can break up to 60k rocks even a little more depending on the rock when you're doing that so great for when you're solo mining absolutely essential i recommend it for everyone i run this setup stock because you're more likely gonna find rocks in that 20 to 35k range most of the time so this is just better to have for a general basis because if I find a 20K rock, I'm not overpowering it or underpowering it. And I'm not burning surges unnecessarily. I can break most things I run across with this setup. And then if I see a huge rock that's really, really juicy that I want, I can hop out, switch out my modules real quick. I carry three surges on board at all times. I even carry a spare set of three just in case. So that way I have the ability to break the huge rocks, but I'm, that's not what I'm necessarily looking to find. I'd rarely find them that I want. The back lasers are both half steeds because the helix, as we can see here, the optimal range is 30, the maximum range is 90. But if I come over here to the half steed, right? The half steed optimal is 60, 
in the Optimals 180. Now these rear turrets sit about 30 meters back from the front of the ship where the front laser is, because it's actually right here. It's not up here, it's like right under here. So this offset works really well for the Hofstede and Helix, almost like they're made for that. So that's what you want because of the optimal and maximum range. They give you that range to really be solid support lasers. But what I like to do is primarily I break with this and then if sub breaks need to happen, well, this laser has way too much power to break smaller fragments. So then I can come down to the back, hop in one of these two lasers and do my other breaks. Now, how you wanna do that's up to you, whether you need speed or you're focused on being careful. So turret two, which is the left slot, I have a tor torrent three, which charges your thing faster. It gives a plus 40% optimal charge rate. And you have a Torpid, which is also charging, but this is a active mod. So this gives actively when active, 60% optimal charge rate or minus 60% overcharge rate. So it only does one or the other. So if you're in the optimal zone, it does the optimal. But if you tip over an overcharge zone, it does the overcharge. So that's the easiest way to think about it. And you get five shots. They last a whole minute. It's way longer than you'll need, trust me. But that's what that's for. So this is my charging faster laser but it also doesn't take a hit to laser power. So why do I have these fast chargers? So the Hofstede size two comes with some pretty great buffs. So you have minus 30% res resistance, great. 20% optimum charge window rate. So you can see how when you combine these with it, it's just fantastic. Extraction, uh, two module slots, inert material, yeah. Laser instability increases a little bit, not listed on here. I don't know if it's intentional or not, is a plus 60% increase to optimal charge window size. So it makes the optimal charge window 60% bigger, which makes this e it's just all around easier to break small fragments and makes for a good support laser. Now this, so we have two, we have the Focus 3 and the Torrent, right? So we know what the Torrent does. The Focus 3 actually makes your optimal charge window size bigger by 40%, but you're sacrificing 5% laser power. So I don't love putting a lot of these on my lasers, but you can see why this can be effective because now I take 5% laser power hit, which for maximum power on my Hofstede is what, 33, so I take 5%, which is like what, 150 laser power-ish hit I take? So 150 maximum laser power hit, but I can make my charge window 100% when you increase it with the Hofstede's buffs. So this is for a more balanced uh, buff because it increases my optimal charge rate in the window. This is our optimal charge rate. So when you have all this combined, you can break huge rocks and I can come back here to my back lasers, right? And when I come back here, I can use them to break smaller rocks. And if I have people come in to be support laser people, well, they're already set up to be fantastic support lasers. I don't need them to push a lot of power. My front laser can break a 60K rock by itself. So with these two lasers, I could probably go up to maybe 75, 80K. And I mean, how often do you see 75, 80K rocks? Probably not very often, I'd imagine. So a really solid build, it's really helpful. It's used for so many things. I, I truly enjoy it. It's a lot of people that I've had use it tell me like, oh my God, Fox, like I use so many, uh, I can break so many rocks. I have so much ability when I'm out and about mining, like I don't feel like I'm missing, it just feels balanced, and, and it is. And if you're out and about searching, you know, on your own, which a lot of people are, it's fantastic build to run. I, I like having people in my mole, I just think with the state of mining, I think some changes need to be made to really balance out the mining loop. Because let's say I get a full load of, I don't know, like Boris, right? A full load of Boris is gonna run me, it gets you about page about somewhere between 280 and 300 thousand dollars okay well if i have two people in my mole with me assumingly let's just say i'm going to split it evenly three ways well we're only making like once you refine it like 100k a piece and i mean that mining run sure you have three people so maybe it's a bit faster is gonna run you i don't know what do you think man i would say like easily gonna run you what uh 30k to refine so uh, it's, it's not a lot it's not a lot that's really weird okay sorry about that Okay, 
so what I put in my backpack you guys didn't see is I carry an assortment of gadgets with me and different gadgets do different things. So you've got the Optimax, right? And all these gadgets I think I bought here. So you've got the Optimax. The Optimax increases cluster factor. So if you've ever seen a rock that's like, I don't know, 40% Terranite, and then you break it into pieces and all the pieces seem to suck. Yeah, that's because you had bad cluster factor. And part of that is the materials you mine. So cluster factor is better with different materials. So I like to pick places to mine that have great cluster factors. So like where I'm going into Lyria, it has aluminum, right? And hang on, okay. we'll be right back. All right, and we're back from the XL YouTube quantum drive. Quite an amazing quantum drive. You guys absolutely need to get one. It's pretty awesome. So anyway the gadgets right so we have the optimax right the optimax increases cluster factor uh, aluminum has a great cluster factor which is a cheap material but that means it clings to itself so when i am mining expensive materials it is less likely to attach to them in the sub breaks the bore max kills instability i want to say it's a minus 70 percent um instability which is huge right you can already see like why that would be really alluring and you have the let's see Formax, Optimax, you have the Saber, which kills resistance. I think it's minus 50% um, resistance, which you can immediately kind of see the, of why that would be like super helpful, right? Like, obviously that is pretty standard. And it's really the three big ones I like. Oh, and the uh, Wave Shift. The Wave Shift gives a 100% increased optimal charge window size. So instantly you can see why that would be helpful. And it kind of all depends on your build. Like different people have different builds that they like to go to. And uh, it's kind of up to you, you know, different builds, you know, different things rock your boat, right? These are all gonna be really good, right? Let's zoom in, let's see. Yep, see, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's all there. That's a good one, so we'll head to that one. And then this one's probably also gonna be a good one. Let's see, yep, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, yep, zoom out speed up yeah scan mode so the gadgets I always bring a couple I like to bring a couple optimaxes because you never know like right when you're gonna need optimaxes and sometimes you find really good rocks right beside each other you don't want to hop in and out of your thing a million times so sometimes it is just better to do it that way but again it's up to you oh I have to, oh, I have to go to the cloud ceiling oh my god it's so stressful to do that okay so when you're out here mining the front laser optimally to get it in right in optimal range you're looking at about uh 52 meters from a rock 52 meters from a rock and that is the optimal range for that rock from the helix anyway i think you need to be a little bit closer for the other ones but uh, i mean it doesn't just really matter all right, that's a small fry. Again, we're looking for larger rocks, right? I'll, I'll break a 10K-ish rock, but really it's not what I'm after. Oh, okay, this is a good one. Okay, 42% Terranite, that's pretty good. See, I like this little cluster here because there's three of them. And, oh yeah, look at that. There's three of them and they're so close together and they're really good materials. This this is solid, this is perfect. 9K, uh, not great, but okay. All right, we don't really care about that. So what we care about is these two. So let's reposition ourselves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself 50 meters from each of these rocks by putting myself in the middle and then we're gonna scooch forward, scooch, 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 or we're right in the middle, look at that. And then that's V2 and then we're gonna tilt up. So what you wanna do is you see where the top of the rocks are, you want your glass to be just above it now you see how it's kind of changed it a little bit for us so we need to there we go we need to back up a little bit right there perfect all right that should be right in the optimal zone for the front lasers exactly what we want so now that we've got that all situated so for this ladder it takes forever to walk down it right it's a long ladder so if you just walk backwards you'll fall down and then right before the bottom you grab on like that and you'll hurt yourself you'll stop yourself from hurting yourself otherwise if you don't do that you'll take like one or two percent damage 
from the fall itself. So not a lot, but if you do it enough, you might get a tier one or two leg injury. Uh, you might hurt yourself enough that it becomes a problem. You can't walk right. So why bother? If you just do that, uh, it's a easier, way, way easier. But of course, you could just slide down the ladder too. If you're that kind of person, I'm not, but you could be. So see how this shrinks your optimal charge window? That is the trade-off for using this setup. You're gonna make your charge window so, so, so small. Now you probably think I'm a liar right now. You're like, Fox, this is a 25K rock. You're not charging it. No, I'm not because it has 24 resistance. So it is resisting a lot of my laser power here. So we're gonna go ahead and juice this and see, see, yeah, there we go. Just like that. We've overcome the resistance and you can see immediately why this build is so handy. Now the problem here is that if you're inexperienced, you're not really used to mining like this, it's kind of nerve wracking because it's very easy to shoot this into the overcharge zone with how small my optimal zone is. So as you, whoa, right? Don't be afraid to take the laser off, right? I kind of panicked there a little bit. I didn't mean to snatch that the way I did. I was trying to control my laser power and I accidentally moved the mouse. Okay, so yeah, now we're gonna drop this down. It charges very slowly though, so we're trying to play a dangerous game here of balancing where the laser power is at to keep it in the optimal zone. Definitely an experience thing. The, the better you get at it, uh, you'll master like keeping it in this zone. Because, I, I mean, it, it, is, it is a really small optimal zone. And to keep it in there, for that amount of time is difficult. Now this rock is only 14K, so I can do this at minimum laser power, and we're gonna have to do something I call throttling. So throttling is where this was charging at 30%, which what does that mean is, since that's the lowest I can take my power, once it's in the optimal zone, I'm gonna have to turn the laser on and off like that to keep it from overcharging. But since it charges so slowly, I can take advantage of it. And then right as it starts to kind of maybe overcharge a little bit, I want to turn the laser back on right when it gets to the tippity top of optimal zone and then stop like that and break. Boom, so super, super easy. And just from a glance, right, as I look at these rocks, they're all outlined in yellow, which means we're gonna have to break them some more. So perfect, this is a great time for me to show you, right? Cause these rocks are gonna be way smaller than the 25K and the 14K that we broke a second ago. So we're gonna hop out of this turret, we're gonna go get in the back, uh, we'll get in the back left turret. Let's go try out the back left turret because these aren't gonna be really hard to break. So the left turret has more speed for me uh, than anything else. Actually, you know what, we'll do the right turret because I'm probably not gonna use the torpid. So we'll just use the turret, we'll use the focus. I don't need all the laser power. These aren't gonna be huge fragments. So we'll go do that. And we'll head on back here and you'll see how this position is really helpful of where I position the ship because these rear lasers can also see everything I need to. Side note, you can just fall down that one, walk it backwards and you don't have to climb down that one either. And it's short enough distance that you're not going to hurt yourself. So not a big deal. So with these lasers, why do I tilt the ship up so high? So you see how this is on a railing? I cannot look any higher than it is looking right now but I can look much lower, right? So if I look down, look how far down I can look. But if I look up, I'm limited. So the goal here is to try to give myself the most access to what I'm doing. And these can look surprisingly wide for their field of view. I can look way 90 degree right and 90 degree left, which you wouldn't expect with the side lasers. But since I can look so far, I have access to all these rocks already. So I don't really need to move. Although I might need to get in the other laser because some of those are hidden, but we'll see how this broke. We'll just turn that on to drop that down to 10%, 20%. So this is 40% Terranite, that's not bad. I like to scan a couple just to kind of get the lay. There's no real rhyme or reason to why I'm scanning this right now. I'm just kind of kind of nosing around, seeing how it broke. If I really wanted a good break, I could have put a Optimax on it, but I chose not to because, uh, well, quite frankly, because I'm lazy. There's a Boreas rock. Boreas likes to break really good, so that's always nice. Boreas inherently has a great cluster factor, so it's always nice to break Boreas. So, boom, look how high that charge window made itself. 
huge. So you can see the appeal here and like, oh, Jesus. Well, I screwed that up. That's sad. That's really sad. That's really bad. Wow, I got a little cocky there. Well, this is gonna knock all my mods off. Did it? No, didn't knock my mods off. I didn't see them fall. Well, that's sad. That was a really good rock too. All right, well, enough showboating. I was trying to get the charge faster and I got a little, uh, little heavy handed in the laser power there. But if anything, that should give you an indication of why I switched lasers, because this laser is immensely less powerful. It is half as powerful as the Helix, and I was even lower on the power. I can only put 10% of this power at a time in a rock. So that alone, being at 40%, shot me way into the overcharge zone. So, rookie move, you know, it happens. It happens to the best of us. We can't all be masterminders all the time. And then, so when I'm scanning, you see how it has a high resistance? Generally, the high tier materials have very high resistance factors. The only ones that don't is like Hephaestonite. Hephaestonite has really high instability instead, but it has a zero uh, resistance. So it's also kind of easy to figure out. I like Boris because Boris has a great um, SCU to mass conversion. So you'll see here like Eight, what is that? 600 mass, 800 mass, four SCUs. I think that's 800 mass. So really, really good. 200 mass over to SCU. Like that's that's solid. I mean, look how much we're picking up here. Like, and it's just all pure Boris. There's such great breaks. Not have to sweat mining this at all. And we're just casually sucking all this up. Have you guys seen the salvage drama? that's going on everyone's mad about the claw on the reclaimer like i don't think that's that bad i mean everyone's just like mad like they gave you a feature that wasn't ready to be nice right to try to like you know give the community something they really really want and then everyone's like no oh, i don't like this it's not done i don't like that it's not complete why are you giving us this feature it's like dude they didn't even have to give you a feature like they did it to make it you know, accessible to people and to give people the ability to like play an aspect of the game they hadn't got to play before, right? Because you have this giant claw on the reclaimer and you couldn't use it. I think it's pretty helpful because you can destroy the ship, use the claw and reclaim the ship. And as you do that, it's actually really helpful because <laughs> you can get rid of debris ships, right? Like if a ship is like, you know, taking up space somewhere you can get rid of it like completely from the server they've created a way to actually clean up the server that players can do now when players salvage right they don't have to leave salvage carcasses everywhere they can just get rid of the ship like that's so helpful like that's i feel like that's super slept on that's so 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 slept on Ugh. on a side note i am really sad about that terranite rock it was so good there's a good one. No, it's not. But we'll break it. Let's see if I can not shoot this into the atmosphere, or shoot me into the atmosphere, rather. God, did it again. Well, we'll just go ahead and start working on this one. That's gonna take a while to slow down. Getting a little impatient here. Not even big spikes. Oh. Yeah, be careful. Then I'm gonna throttle a little bit. Try to keep that optimal zone from going down too much as we wait. I'm just tapping it because it'll charge a little bit faster. Yeah, there we go. Without uh, overcharging it or put too much charge to the rock. And this wasn't gonna fill us up, but you know, it's not bad. Okay, see how that corundum all stuck to each other? That's what we want. That's what we want. 
This isn't a great split, but you know, I'm not gonna be picky right now. I've already kind of ruined my good rock that I wanted, so I'm gonna kind of take what I got. And be careful there, I don't want that, all that corundum. I don't mind some, but I don't want a lot. I'll take about a 25% or, or close to 25% is about all I'll take when it comes to that stuff. So like, I mean, one SCU of it, not bad, not great. I love rocks that are in the dirt because like when you break them, it like shatters everything else out of the way. I have five SCUs here, Terranite, solid. Oh, server's kind of laggy. Oh there, oh there. Easy girl, easy. See, the advantage of the helix is the helix um, lowers your optimal zone. So when you turn the laser off, it actually gets bigger, but the opposite happens with the Hofsteed. So when you turn it off, it actually makes your optimal zone much smaller. So that can be a problem if you're really close to the top of your optimal zone, it bleeds into the overcharge zone when you turn the laser off. And that I don't like. So that's like a can part of it that I have a contention with. I don't think it's great, but I mean, eh, it is what it is. Someone is hovering over me. What do you want, sir? Oh, it's a prospector. There's a little prospectory boy here. Hello, sir. All right, let's finish some of these other things. What is he doing? Whoa, 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 whoa. Easy there, easy. Okay, okay, let's this little... I mean, it looks like we have a fan watching us here. That's, that's nice. Well, if he starts sucking up my rocks, I'm gonna blow up his ship. Promise you. I'm seeing if he's talking in the chat. I don't think so. Oh, he's backing up. Let's say, bro, you don't have the ass to take on me, boy. I was like, don't, don't do it to yourself. Don't do it. Oh, that's 100% Terranite right there. Yep, 50% resistance. Has to be 100% Terranite. Had to be. Oh, no. What did I just... I didn't pick that up. I picked up the one in front of it. I hope that was... Well, that was 100%. Mm -hmm. He's off to other places. Nine percent... He came to snoop. He came to the little, little peak of what we're up to over here. All right. No, oh, no, he's coming back. I just get broadsided by a torpedo. Oh, no. Fuck. See, this were my helix. That would be kind of nice because then I could, uh. Charge dead down a little bit. I don't want to lose too much laser power while I wait, though. This is where, like, having that torpedo would have been really handy. It actually, probably would have saved me a little bit here. And this should do it. Yeah. Boom. That'll break apart. That'll separate. Beautiful, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Nice and spread out. I can see the rocks behind it. Now I don't have to reposition my ship. Yeah, nice that is. Yeah, that's how yeah, easy that worked out. 
part of breaking the rocks is just knowing the differentiating way you want to do it. Anyway, the whole claw drama. I, I think people are just ungrateful. I think people are ungrateful for the stuff they provide. I mean, I know people have been waiting like, oh my god, so long to have the claw and the reclaimer. But like now you have it though. Like you have it and now you're upset that it's not at the finished state that you wanted it. It's like, man, brood, it is what it is, man. Like, you, you got it, it's there, you can use it. It's no longer a non-functioning part of your ship that takes up space. It's helpful, it provides value while you're out salvaging. Like, I don't know, I don't know what more you could want. I mean, I feel like that's a pretty, that's a pretty good deal in my opinion. But, you know, neither here nor there. So you can see the appeal here in using this, right? Like how easily I can just kind of casually go through. If I hadn't been goofing off with the laser power, very easily breaking these rocks, uh, super easy to extract them, super easy to crack them. And I'm just like not even stressing uh, what I'm doing. So that, that resistance is way too low. I'm not even gonna bother scanning that. that. That resistance is just so low that I already know that it's not gonna be anything I want. I need close to 50% resistance. The closer, ooh. This is a good one. So you may be wondering why the resistance is higher when it's just Terranite. Um, like if this were 100% Terranite, why this would be higher resistance? Well, different materials have different modifiers. So Corundum has a modifier that lowers resistance, which is why this resistance is actually lower than 50% when Terranite itself has a base of 50. So picking where you mine, this is why Lyria is kind of a great place to mine because the materials that are here are really, really good, right? They have good cluster factors, they have good uh, auxiliary factors, they just, they complement what you're doing so well. All right, I'm a little confused. It looks like I lost a chunk. I hope not, but I, I could be wrong. I don't know. But it definitely looked like I lost a big chunk there, even though I did not even remotely overcharge that rock. Because that should have been like a lot of Terranite to get out of this rock. I should get a lot of Terranite. 42%. Yeah, I already know I want that. Gimme, 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 gimme. Beautiful. See what this one is. This one's probably pretty good. The other segment wasn't great, so I'm assuming these three were pretty good. Yeah, the, all three of these were like 48. So beautiful. I mean, this this turned out to be pretty good breaks. I mean, these weren't great breaks, but they weren't bad breaks. I, if I hadn't lost that big chunk of Terranite in the beginning, I mean, honestly, I'd be exactly where I would want to be. I mean, I would almost be full on this load. I mean, this is 50% Terranite. So this is going to give me seven more SCUs. It's going to put me at 87. I might just take the Corundum just to take it, but I don't know. I think there's some Boris around the corner that I didn't get earlier. So I think I can see it with the uh, Helix. So I think I'll hop back into Helix after this to see if that's there because it's already broken. I just need to extract it. So we'll probably do that and get out of here and we'll be done with this mining run. A little bit longer of a run, kind of, kind of, not really. I mean, the run took about as long as I thought it would. This is a lot of Terranite. Why did I start mining this before I even saw the resistance? Because one of the things I had, uh, it was like 10% resistance. So I immediately just assumed that these other ones had really good splits in them. Like this one's pure Terranite. Yeah, see. Although it's probably only like one SCU, but you know, whatever. Let's do some precision extracting here. Let's sneak past this one. This 50-50 looks like. I was way off 3169, but you know, say levy. It'd be all right. Uh, here's another piece. I didn't see this piece. What do we got here? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll take it. Maybe it'll reveal another piece to me. This is going to be small fry, Corundum, Corundum, Terranite. That's not a lot. Alright, I'll even break this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break this rock just to get it out of my way so I don't have to move lasers. Snag a couple more SCUs of Boris and we'll call this square. 
Couple more SCUs of Boris and we'll be good to go. And I'm gonna kill it because I don't want it to get too close to overcharge and accidentally bust me. Boom, now split away, get out of my way. Oh, oh, I might just push something where I can see it. Come on, that's not, I want this to be what I want. Nope. Maybe this one? Yeah, 30% resistance. Yep, Boris. Perfect. Boom. Precision mining. 37 SUs of Terranite. Beautiful. I will take that all day. So my measure of success is a pure barrel load. So a pure load of barrel goes for about 200k. And Terranite is worth three times that. So if it were a full load of Terranite, I would get about 750,000 for it. Ish, ish, you know, give or take. So a half load of that almost. And then we've got a fair bit of Borace. We've got the Corundum. I, I don't mind the Corundum. A lot of people like don't sell it, but I feel like it adds to my runs because if I don't, uh... well, this is kind of scary. Kind of looks like the ground, doesn't it? And just like that, we're in space. So it, it adds value to my run. Otherwise, I feel like if I fill up half my hold with it or even a third and I don't sell it, then that was just wasted time in space. And uh, it's just upsetting to me. So that, that be what it be. But that's just me. That's my personal preference. Some people don't like it. They don't like taking up space in like their C2 or whatever or their Caterpillar. I don't mind it. It's not invaluable. It beats what it costs to sell it. It pays for your mining trip, so that's kind of how I view it. And we'll be right back. Woof! Okay. Alright. If you don't have one yet, XL, YouTube, fastest quantum drive in the game. It's absolutely spectacular. So, I mean, yeah, I, I think the future of salvage is in a pretty good spot. I think the fact that the claw works, I think it doesn't chew things up, you know what I mean? Like, um like the cookie monster, right? It just kind of like absorbs him, which I mean, it is the way it is, right? It's just the state it's in. But, but I think that it could be really valuable. I think that it adds a lot to the game and I think people just need to get over it. Personally, it's my personal opinion. Fun little trick if you're going to a mining station, right? When you quantum to a station, if you aim in between it, get up to 600, 650 speed and just drop to, you know, get her 650 speed and just kill your power. Well, not power, but you like stop your cruise control, stop your acceleration, just let it deaccelerate. You can actually just cruise the entire way to the station. You don't have to like do anything. Some people like to fly really fast and then, but with the mole, it doesn't slow down quickly. So you have to like flip around, like do a front flip or whatever, back flip, I do back flips and hit full power to thrust <clears throat> and turbo to really slow down. But then you overshoot it and then you start playing this game of like shooting it, overshooting it, shooting it, overshooting it. And then like you're going back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, desperately trying to just like stop because <laughs> it's not easy to maneuver this giant thing. And now we're just gonna glide it in real slow. I'm actually on the underside technically because the landing bays are on the other side. So what we're gonna do here is as we're slowing down, we're just gonna spin. Yep, it was really scary. This is why we aim at a... Uh... Please proceed to assign landing yep, This is why we aim for nothing. So if we do go a little too fast and we overshoot it, we're not gonna accidentally hit anything. Really slow, nice and easy in. You actually break faster with your thrusters forward. So you don't wanna twist them to hover mode till right now. Cause if you don't put your hover mode on when you come in here, well, I'll show you, my landing gears are up, right? So if I, as soon as I come in here, right? And then if I turn my hover VTOL off, I fall. 
I thought that was going to be way more dramatic than it was. I thought I was going to fall like a sack of potatoes. I think they kind of fixed that a little bit. Because before, like, you could dream on. Funny story, when I first started the mole, I actually didn't use the VTOL. Because I, you know, normally ship to have VTOL don't need it, like the Cutlass, right? So you can just fly without it. But the mole cannot support its weight casually without VTOL mode on. So <laughs> if you don't put VTOL mode on, it's hard to take off. And I was like, why can't I take off? And like, if you boost, you can overcome the force of gravity without your VTOL thrusters, but you have to boost the entire time. But you can boost your way out of the hangar that way. And then I figured out I'd turn VTOL on and then you can just casually, very leisurely fly out of the hangar and the whole thing. But you know, it, you, you live and you learn, you know. Welcome. Lessons learned. I think everyone at some point uh, forgets to turn their VTOL on, especially if you're flying on a planet with high gravity, which is most planets that has, at least has some gravity. It will pull you to the ground. So a lot of times people would be going full tilt um, towards the surface thinking that, oh, yeah, my ship's going to slow down. I, I mean, it, it will. It will. Not as fast as you want it to. And a general rule of thumb is for every... 100 meters per second of speed you have is about a thousand meters of slowdown it's going to take in atmosphere now that's kind of guesstimated because once you get up over 300 it takes a little more time excuse me a little more time to slow down like more it's like 1500 meters once you reach 300 meters per second to slow down but at 200 and below generally is where i like to keep my speed at you can get that down at about 2000 meters which is helpful when you're trying to like zero in all right, my fun little thing. I'm not gonna sell it. I just wanna kind of guesstimate what it's gonna be worth. Or go mole. So 160. That puts us at 320, because roughly raw ore is about half as much as it is refined. So not a bad haul. These are actually some hauls I did with some uh, followers. Oh, if you guys haven't, please, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, guys. It's completely free, and it helps me out so so much here on the channel. It's honestly the best thing you can do. Uh, besides just watching I, I don't want anyone's money uh, just watching and like hitting the like button being a part of the legion is all i could ever ask for fair on exchange so 37,000, 28 hours so solid see like but watch if i take the current amount right so 25 this is worth we'll say 300 so 7500 but how much is going to cost to refine so let's see so 369 without it 374 with it so we're gonna pay 500 more dollars but get about $7,000 on the low end if this is $300 per for the corundum. So you might as well refine it and get your money's worth because it's going to help cover the cost of refining and all that stuff. And that's how I view it. But, you know, c'est la vie. So that order is started. We got a couple orders in for our last run here in 3.21.1 for 3.22 comes out. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys have been amazing. I'll see you guys in the next one.